Hello students, myself Dr. Sachin Kapoor and I wish you a very warm welcome to this session of Zoology Lecture. The topic of our discussion today is ovulation. As you can see, ovulation is the process of release of oocyte from the ovary. Ovaries are the primary sex organs of the female. They are almond shaped intra abdominal structures. As you can see in this diagram, I have shown this is uterus, this is vagina. The lower narrow portion of the uterus is called cervix. These are the two fallopian tubes, right? I have shown ovary on one side. As you can see, this is the ovary. This is fallopian tube. These finger-like processes are fimbriae. These fimbriae are supposed to capture the released oocyte. The follicle develops in the ovary. In our previous lectures, we have discussed folliculogenesis, that is process of formation of the follicle. The different stages of follicular development are primordial follicle, primary follicle, secondary follicle, tertiary follicle and graphin follicle. In this diagram, you can see that this is the graphene follicle, the final mature follicle which undergoes ovulation. This structure which I have shown here is the released oocyte. This is not ovum, please remember. It is oocyte. It is actually secondary oocyte which is arrested at metaphase 2 stage. So we have written here process of release of oocyte. To be more preci precise, you can say that it is secondary oocyte which is released from the ovary and it is arrested at metaphase 2 stage. This secondary oocyte will enter into the fallopian tube. So as we have shown here that it is captured by the fimbriae and it enters the fallopian tube. Now if this secondary oocyte gets fertilized by a sperm, if the sexual intercourse has happened and there are sperms in the female tract, if a sperm penetrates into secondary oocyte, then the meiosis is completed and ovum is formed. So it is at this stage that the second polar body is released. Sometimes the released oocyte may not enter the fallopian tube. The fimbriae fail to capture the released oocyte and it is lost in the body cavity itself. It is lost in the body cavity. It is destroyed by phagocytes. The survival time is 24 hours. Secondary oocyte survives for 24 hours. And even in fallopian tube, if it is not fertilized by the sperm, the secondary oocyte is destroyed by the phagocytes without leaving any scar of its existence. Survival time just 24 hours. After that, it is a dead cell. So that dead cell will be destroyed by the phagocytes. One more thing, please remember. The oocyte released from the right ovary can enter into left fallopian tube also. You imagine this structure in a three-dimensional way. There are two fallopian tubes, there are two uh, ovaries. The oocyte released from this side can enter into the left fallopian tube also. And the one which is released from the left ovary can enter the right fallopian tube also. Now, look at this graph. I have shown a menstrual cycle of 28 days. All the females may not have a perfectly 28-day cycle. If the cycle is of 28 days, then ovulation occurs on day 14th of the cycle, right? What is day 1? What do we mean by day 1 when we say day 1 of the cycle? So please remember, when you say day 1 of cycle, it is actually first day of menstrual bleeding. The first day of menstrual bleeding is counted as day 1 of the cycle. If her cycle is of 28 days, ovulation occurs on day 14th. As I have shown in, uh, as I have written here also, ovulation occurs on day 14 if the menstrual cycle is of 28 days. Now what if the cycle is not of 28 days? There are females who can have a 35 day cycle also. So what will be the day of ovulation if her cycle is of 35 days? Please remember, the simple formula to calculate the day of ovulation is that ovulation occurs 14 days before the onset of the next menses. I'll repeat, ovulation occurs 
14 days before the onset of next menses. 14 days before the onset of next menses. Whenever she is going to experience the next date, you have to subtract 14 from that. That means, if her cycle is of 35 days, day of ovulation will be 35 minus 40, 14, that is day 21. If her cycle is of say 40 days, then day of ovulation will be 40 minus 14, that will be 26. And if her cycle is of 28 days, it will be 28 minus 14, that is 14. I hope you have understood. I will repeat my point. We generally say that ovulation occurs in the mid of the cycle. That you can say only if her cycle is of 28 days. If her cycle is of 35 days, then you cannot say that ovulation is going to happen on day 17. No. If the cycle is of 40 days, you cannot say ovulation happens on day 20. The simple formula to calculate the day of ovulation is that it occurs 14 days before the onset of the next menses. Now, if her cycle is of 28 days, when you subtract 14 from 28, the answer is 14, which is by default a half of 28. So, in that case, you can say that ovulation occurs in the mid of the cycle, but you cannot generalize it for every female because different females have different duration of the cycle. So, this is the formula which we use to calculate the day of ovulation. Let us come back. On day 1 of the cycle, what is day 1 of the cycle? The first day of menstrual bleeding, when there is bleeding in the uterus, many follicles, they start developing in the ovary. These structures which I have shown here are the follicles. So, many follicles, say 15 to 20 follicles, start developing in the ovary. Maybe right ovary or maybe left ovary, right? Both ovaries generally alternate in the process of ovulation, but there is no hard and fast rule. Sometimes the same ovary continues to release ova for many months and then the other ovary takes over the function. So, there is no hard and fast rule. Many follicles, they start developing in the ovary, but on day 7, when there is 7th day of the cycle, then what happens is that one dominant follicle, this structure we have shown here is the dominant follicle. One dominant follicle gets selected and other follicles they die. They undergo a process called follicular atresia. They degenerate. So, say 15 to 20 follicles they started developing on day 1, but on day 7 one dominant follicle gets selected. It grows and forms the final mature follicle that is graphene follicle. I am labeling it as GF. What is GF? What is GF? Graphene follicle. So, one dominant follicle is selected that grows to form the graphene follicle. This graphene follicle undergoes the process of ovulation. It ruptures, it releases the secondary oocyte as we have shown in this diagram also. The graphene follicle ruptures. Now, why it ruptures? Which is the ovulation causing hormone? It is LH. I have written here that LH is the ovulation causing hormone. The level of LH keeps increasing from day 1 of the cycle. The level of LH, luteinizing hormone, which is secreted by anterior pituitary gland, the level keeps on increasing from day 1. One day prior to ovulation, it attains a sharp peak. That sharp peak is called LH surge. I will repeat, level of LH keeps increasing during the follicular phase. This phase is follicular phase, when the follicle is developing. One day prior to ovulation, the level of LH attains a sharp peak. It rises sharply. That's called LH surge. That LH surge ruptures the wall of the graphene follicle and secondary oocyte surrounded by zona pellucida, corona radiata and cumulus oophorus is released from the ovary. So, it is not only the secondary oocyte which is released from the ovary, this secondary oocyte Please remember, when it is released from the ovary, it is surrounded by zona pellucida, which is a glycoproteinaceous layer, corona radiata, which is a layer of granulosa cells, and it is also surrounded by cells of cumulus oophorus. So, this structure is released from the ovary and it is captured by the fimbrae of the fallopian tube. After the release of the secondary oocyte, the remaining cells of the graphene follicle 
form a temporary endocrine gland which is called what? Corpus luteum. So, what is corpus luteum? Corpus luteum is a temporary endocrine gland which is formed from remaining cells of the graphene follicle. This corpus luteum secretes small amount of estrogen and it secretes large amount of progesterone. It is the source of progesterone. It keeps functioning for 7 to 10 days in the absence of fertilization and then corpus luteum also degenerates and it forms corpus albicans. Corpus luteum is also called yellow body because it has lutein protein and carotene pigment. Lutein protein and carotene pigment gives it a yellowish tinge. So, that is why it is called yellow body. When the corpus luteum degenerates, then it is called what? White body. Corpus albicans. So, corpus albicans is white body. Is it clear? I will repeat what we have discussed. We discussed about the process of ovulation. Ovulation is release of the secondary oocyte from the ovary which is the ovulation causing hormone LH. Luteinizing hormone is the ovulation causing hormone, right? The level of LH keeps increasing during follicular phase. Then it attains a sharp peak that is called LH surge, which ruptures the wall of the graphene follicle resulting in ovulation. How can a female she predict that she is about to ovulate? One way is measurement of the body temperature. If she measures her body temperature regularly, starting from day one of the cycle, she will feel or she will experience that around the days of ovulation, the body temperature slightly increases because of thermogenic effect of progesterone. But it is not a foolproof way of detecting ovulation because body temperature can increase if there is mild infection in the body. If she has mild cold, cough, that can also result in slight increase in the body temperature. Ovulation predicting kits. Ovulation predicting kits are available in the market. They are based on the fact that she is supposed to check LH in her urine. If the test of LH is positive in her urine, that indicates ovulation. So, that test can be performed around the expected days of the ovulation. She is aware of the total length of her cycle. And she is sure that for the last few months, she is having a 28 day cycle only. Then she can check her urine on day 12 of the cycle, day 13 of the cycle, day 14 of the cycle. If the test for LH is positive in the urine by that ovulation predicting kit, so that means that LH surge has happened and ovulation has occurred. The, these kits are used by the couples who are planning to have kids who want to calculate the fertile period so that if they indulge in sexual intercourse during those days, then chances of pregnancy are maximum. Is it clear? So, that was all about ovulation. I hope now it is clear to you. In our forthcoming lectures, we will be discussing about the female reproductive cycle also. Thank you.